All right, guys. I just wanted to uh, apologize for the lack of content that I've posted. I know it's been a number of years since I posted anything significant, and the last thing I did post kind of got a lot of people excited, but then I never followed through on it. And that's kind of what happens when you have a family. I had a kid. I started school, finished school, still have a kid, still have a wife, all that fun stuff. Been bouncing around from job to job trying to improve my career, so it's been kind of hectic, but I'm hoping I can get back into things as time progresses. I'm still doing a lot of 3D stuff, but I am focusing a lot on flying. Um, I became a private pilot, and I'm working towards a certified flight instructor position. Um, I'm still currently in the tech industry. I work in a major uh, like storage data storage company and I'm just gonna keep doing what I need to do to ensure that uh, not only my life but my wife and my kids life is comfortable so I apologize for all of that but without further ado I'd like to go ahead and just kinda give you some some more stuff here that you can watch and hopefully you'll enjoy so what I have is uh, Cinema 4D I'm gonna go ahead and open that up <clears throat> I'll give that a minute. Maybe. It is kind of weird. It doesn't really like to open up immediately. All right. So, inside of Cinema 4D, I have Octane. This is where I kind of started out before was in Octane for the last video I posted. Let's go ahead and um, let's just kind of show you the basics inside of Cinema 4D and Octane. So I'm going to close this and we're going to open up an image here. So we're going to merge. Not an image, a sorry, a 3D model. And I have these really cool VFX 3D scans that I had purchased. The guy is awesome. Um, at the time, anybody who signed up at the time for any amount got all of his stuff for a dollar. Uh, I paid him about ten bucks at first, and he pushed me down to a dollar because that's what everybody else was. I was happy to pay ten, but put me down to a dollar, so I was happy. It's on Gumroad. I have to pull, pull up a link and show you guys, but he makes some pretty good stuff. For the time being, I'll go ahead and just import this, and we'll get it all set up for you. It'll take a long time to load uh, because it is a high mesh, high poly mesh. And this is what we have. I'm still rocking about the same stuff I had before. The only thing I have different now is I'm using a Ryzen Threadripper. I think it's a 1950X, but I'm still using the two Titan Zs that I have. So nothing much has really changed. So let's go ahead and load up the textures for this. And if you don't know how to use Cinema 4D, the way I imported this without opening up a new scene is I used the merge option, control shift O. And then this down here is your material list. This is just the material currently applied. You can also see it applied right here. Uh, That's the texture tag. It's looking for this texture right here. So we just open that up and it gives you all the, in the inputs for your textures here. So we're going to go to color and then we're going to use the texture option right here. We're going to load that up. So ex ignore my uh, mess here. I have a lot of stuff in here I was working on. So we're going to go to extra space, 3D models, and we're going to go to there. And I think I had it in rocks, and I think it's this one. Yeah, I believe it's this one. Sandstone, WW4, yeah. Okay, so that's the color. We're going to open that up. And everything he gives you is already wrapped or unwrapped. All you have to do is just apply the texture and it it looks really nice inside of Cinema 4D. But we also have a few other things. I believe they come with normal maps. Like I said, it's been a minute. So there's the normal map. And you don't have to, but I like to uh, include the bump map. And if you want these to be shown, you have to check the box like that but you also have a bump map here that is provided 
right there. And I also like to include the displacement map because you can get a little bit extra detail out of the displacement. So I'll open that up. And then we'll play with these settings a little bit later. We have to change the strength and the height, but we're going to touch those a little bit later while we're playing around in Octane. Um, now we have to use... I believe we want to use the reflectance here. No. Eh, we'll just stick with what we have right here. Like I said, it's been a minute. So we're just going to use these for the time being. Now let's go ahead and go to Octane. We're going to open up the Live Viewer window. And that'll open this up. And if you click on this Octane Otoy symbol, that'll load it up in Octane. And you'll notice at the beginning, it's not going to really look all that great. We don't have a light inside the scene or anything like that. It's just a very basic, bland looking scene after it loads. It has to take the information from Cinema 4D and transfer it to Octane. Um, outside so it takes a minute for it to kind of do its thing. This is also a high density mesh as you can see so we are playing with a really large mesh here. Now inside of this live viewer window we can do a couple things. We can add objects for instance. Uh, this is the octane cloud option if you have cloud space that you can use to render out your stuff you can do that uh, we're not going to worry about anything up here except for the objects what we want to include is a light and a daylight and by default it'll come in and it'll look all right but it's not going to look great we're going to shrink this a tad bit and you can see now we have our daylight but we also have this black floor. You can see this, the daylight up here, and it's really dark. So we're going to rotate the light on this axis and, you, axis, and you can see this line right here, this white line. That's the direction the light is shining, and you can increase and decrease it by pulling this uh, gizmo right here, and we can tilt it up or down. And if we tilt it up, you can see that it's now pointing down, so it's going to get brighter. If we tilt it up, it's now going up, so it's kind of going down in the horizon. So I like to have just enough light to make it look nice, so about right there. And then you can also rotate it on this axis to do what you want, but I'll show you a different way of doing that so you don't have to fiddle fart with the gizmo inside the scene too much. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and click on the daylight tag. This tag is what helps us change the information on the lighting here to what we want, and this will use Octane's just regular old daylight system that they've had. And you can still have all this stuff here. You can change the models and uh, the lighting models and whatnot. Uh, they have this new one called Nishita Daylight Model. We're just going to stick with the new daylight model for the time being. Um, we're going to change the north offset. Now this is what changing it on the uh, axis right here will do. And we don't need to do that inside of the window here. We can do it right here. So this is going to change which direction the light's coming from. If we decrease it, it's just going to change it. You know, it's going to go around in 360 degrees. So this is the way I recommend playing with it. Um, that way you can do. It's a little bit more fine-tuned, uh, a little bit easier to understand what you're doing, and you don't have to worry about a gizmo. Um, also, another th drawback is is if you use this right here and your sun is pointing a little down or a little up, if you rotate it on this axis, it'll actually arc your light in ways you don't want it to be arced. So say you have the right lighting right now, like the, the right time of day, but then you start fiddling with this, it's going to start arcing your light up and down in the atmosphere, and you don't want that. That's why I recommend using the uh, north offset to kind of get your directional light. Uh, another thing is, is the sun size is going to increase or decrease the sharpness of your shadows, but it's also going to make your sun really large. So if we decrease this so the sun is pointing at the camera, kind of like, like that. Let's go ahead and I think it's Alt. Yeah, Alt and click. Let's find the sun right there, as you can see, right behind the rock. If we increase the sun size, it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to increase the size of the sun. Now we also don't want that to be in our um, 
to be in our shot the way it is. The way you can fix that is playing with the sky turbidity. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the corona effect around the sun. So it's not such a harsh looking sphere in the sky. But that also makes your shadows and your lighting a lot more softened. So it's not as harsh. Um, maybe you want a little bit more bright light coming from the sun. And you don't want such a muted light. You'd have to play around with the sun size and your camera angle. All that fun stuff or you can play around with the power and I don't recommend increasing or decreasing this too much from one I mean really it's all subjective it de depends on what you want to do um, but if you absolutely need a certain shot and the lighting information just isn't what it is that you want you can increase this make it a little bit more bright so you get more light coming off of it and then you get the shadows you need um, however this sun size right here is just astronomically too much <laughs> so we can decrease that actually and then we don't have to play with the sky turbidity too much and you'll kind of see how when I decrease the sky turbidity the lighting information from the light source or the sun is a lot more bright and powerful especially now that we have the power turned up um, but in this case we really kind of want softer shadow so I'm gonna go with like a four point whatever it doesn't really matter um, and then I'm just gonna increase the sky turbidity just a bit though so I don't have to fiddle around with the power too much. All right, cool. So we got our rock and we have the lighting set up the way we want. Now, another problem that we have is this black ground. Well, there's an option down here called ground and you can increase or decrease the blend angle and that will, the more you increase it, the more it blends with the, the overall sky. Um, if you look down, Come on, I know you can do it. There we go. This way, if you look down, you can kind of see how it kind of dissolves into nothing. We can do that. Or you can change the angle at which the ground appears. Now, what I recommend doing is playing with both and getting what you want. However, obviously, it's just all going to be subjective. You can see how this is just changing the ground level in altitude or the starting angle but you can also play around with the ground blend so you can change the starting angle like let's put it there for instance and now we can change the blending to make it more soft and it just really depends on what you want in this case we're gonna be creating our own ground so let's go ahead and um, change this to look at a rock there we go that's our rock and you know what I actually am gonna change the power just a tad bit and then the sky turbidity just a tad bit there we go now we have more light information coming off and I'll decrease the Sun size so we have a little sharper shadows but they're still not super soft uh, or super yeah super soft but kind of still there all right so Next thing is we want to make a ground. Now you have this floor right here, but if you use the floor, it's actually not going to show up in Octane, unfortunately. As much as it would be really cool to have an infinite floor in Octane, um, there's just no easy way to do it, uh, at least with my current knowledge. The best way I've found to do it is to take a plane, and the plane will show up in Octane, as you can see. Now we have some shadows going on here. Um, and if you wanted to work with HDRIs on this, you can use another tag, and I believe it's the, um, I believe it's going to be the compositing tab, or compositing tag, and you want it to receive shadows, not self-shadow, um, and you want it to composite background for HDRI maps. There's something else we need to do. Matte object, I believe. And you change this to white. No, that's not what it is. Maybe it is. Like I said, it's been a minute. Um, but yeah, you, you want it to receive shadows. You don't want it to cast shadows. Um, and I, actually, you know what? I think you have to create a new material. Give me just a sec, we're going to figure this out together. And we're going to change the transparency, I believe, to be 
super transparent? <laughs> well, maybe not. Uh, well, it's in here somewhere. I'll, I'll figure it out. We'll make another video on it. But um, but that's what you want to do. It's going to be that compositing tag. And you want it to receive shadows but not cast shadows. All that fun stuff. But we don't care about that right now. Now we have our ground, which is receiving our shadows. Now if you want to increase the size of this ground um, to be a little bit larger for your scene, I just recommend increasing the size of the plane altogether. And you can use this gizmo right here. This is your scaling tool. And then you just click anywhere in the window and just drag. And what that'll do is it'll increase the size, as you can see. And we can make it really large. We can make it larger than we need it. And we can make it small, whatever we need. That's probably going to be large enough. <laughs> it's probably too large. But anyways, that's what we want. Now we're going to go to the plane. And this is super important. If you don't do this, when we start dis uh, placing the ground here, it's not going to look right. We need to increase the width and height segments here. So we're going to increase them uh, probably about 200 for starters. We'll increase it more later if we have to. And what it's going to do is it's going to increase the segments here and it'll give us more detail in our displacement. Now we're going to go to our mat. We're going to turn off the transparency. And turn off the reflectance for now. Turn off the color for now. And just go to displacement. And we're going to find a texture to use here. Now I have a bunch of textures in my arsenal. A lot of them I made, some of them I bought. Um, let's see, texture library. Gumroad 3D scans. Here's a good one. We're going to do ground dirt. Why not with JPEGs? Uh, this is the diffuse. That's what we want first. Or no, we want the height right there. Sorry. Height first. Say no. I'm going to apply that texture to the plane just by dragging and dropping it on there. And we'll play with this in just a moment. Let's get the color. Now you can see the displacement right there. That's good. Let's load the texture. And let's load the normal. It's super important that we have all of these. Well, we can usually use the occlusion, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So this is going to be a very large texture compared to our rock. We can play with the scaling if we need to, but for now we're just going to deal with what we have right now. Um, let's go to displacement, and let's displace it a bit more. So we only have 5 centimeters of displacement. Let's try 500 centimeters. It's probably not going to be enough either. Well, that's probably too much. Okay, 50 centimeters. Okay, that displaced it just a tad bit more. Um, we're going to have to... What I should have used was an octane displacement mat or, dis, or octane material instead. Um, if I zoom out here, you can see the texture. is actually a really nice texture. Looks really good. It's not really tiling the way I want it to when I'm down close to the object that we need to be looking at. So we're going to make sure we can see our asset here that we want to focus on. Let's move it more inward towards the middle right there. There's an easier way to do it obviously, but that's just the way I'm doing it right now. And let's oh that's not the middle. Okay, right there ought to do it. Maybe. Close enough. Okay, so we just want to zoom in on this. That's our rock. Now, we want to go to the material right here and we want to change the tiles U and V. So let's start with something small like 10. You can see how that's tiling this texture. And we have some artifacts coming in because of the amount of displacement we have. So let's go back down to 10 centimeters. We'll see how that looks right now. Okay, that looks a little better. It's actually coming together quite nicely. 
Um, and I think tiling it by 10 is enough. Let's just get closer and take a look at it. We don't, we're looking back here and making sure that we don't have a lot of repeating uh, textures. And we might need to increase this a tad bit more, maybe 15 by 15. Let's see how that looks. Uh, that's uh, a little bit better. Maybe you know, let's try something really large like 30 by 30. There we go. That's giving us some detail. Now we'll do five centimeters again. And kind of we're just working our way back down, making sure everything looks good. Now we're starting to see a lot of repeating pattern, but that's okay because we're going to be looking at it from the top down like this. And there's still some repeating pattern here and there, not a whole lot to really show a difference. Um, we're going to decrease this a little bit more, maybe three centimeters. There we go. So now we have our lighting. We can see the bumps. We can see the detail and the texture. We have a rock. Now we can close that. Let's go ahead and put our rock down into the ground a bit. And this is why I really like Octane, since it's the best render I can think of for GPU rendering or any kind of landscape rendering. We have the shadows dark where they need to be, and we have the shadows where they need to be, but we're not even using the best setup we can. This is all just default rendering settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to change them around, but you can kind of see how this will be a good example of what the um, sun size will do. So before we get into changing the rendering settings, let's go ahead and play around with the sun size because that's a really nice fall off, but maybe we want less, so let's look at it less. So we decrease it, and you can kind of see now we have really sharp shadows. If we increase it, now we have really soft shadows. It doesn't necessarily look realistic like that, but let's go ahead and we're going to use something a little bit less than what we had before but we can still see the softness in the shadow there. So that's good. Uh, maybe a tad bit more, maybe 1.8. There we go. Um, we're going to actually decrease the sky turbidity even more, and we're just going to put the power back to 1. So now that we can see the shadows and all that fun stuff. Come on. There we go. All righty. Um, that's looking good. Not a whole lot of repeating pattern here in our ground texture. We have a nice dirt look and a rock that looks like it would fit in there. Maybe not entirely, but you know this is just for example anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate this a tad to get some more interesting details. We might play with the sun a little bit more. There's some good details on there, but there we go. I kind of want the shape of the rock to come out just a tad bit more. Let's go to the sun tag and let's play with the north offset. You can see how doing like maybe turntable renders would work out pretty well in Octane, especially with checking out lighting information and whatnot. This looks really good. I want some more shadows. That looks pretty decent right there. Let's get a more interesting camera shot. About right there. And we're going to zoom into this rock a little bit more. There we go. And there's a way inside of Octane to blend the edges here between two objects. I'm not going to do that right now, but there is a way to do it. And I will show you how to do it in another video. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to play with the rendering settings and we're also going to play with the camera settings a bit as well uh, we're going to actually add our own camera we might have to sign up set up this shot again but uh, that's fine because we want to play around with um, the focusing and the camera focus and whatnot and there is a way to pick the focus like right here we can focus on that but if we actually don't have a camera object in here we're just going to get an infinite focus so We'll have to play around with that. But for the time being, let's go ahead and uh, go to our settings here. And that's just that button right there. 
And right now we're using direct lighting. And now this is good enough for most situations. It's also the fastest way to render things out is using direct lighting, uh, using the ambient occlusion mode. Um, but if we wanted to get more information and still keep our renderings fast, we can go to diffuse and that'll actually include the diffuse lighting inside of our render. So now you can see right here, we get a little bit more color data coming in. And if I change that back to ambient occlusion, you can kind of see how that goes away. And if we change that to none, you see how it gets all dark. So um, if you're going to use the direct lighting uh, kernel, I recommend using at least ambient occlusion. But if you can get away with it, use the global illumination diffuse option, because that'll include all the color data you need in your shadows as well. But there is even a better way of doing that. We're going to use the path tracing option. So with path tracing, you're going to have a couple things that happen. It's path. I uh, can get into a little bit more detail on the difference between the direct lighting option and the path tracing option. Um, however, keep in mind, and this is all you really have to know for the time being until we get into a little bit more information, is it's going to take longer to render out your scene using path tracing. It's just going to be a little bit more accurate and a little bit more detailed, but it's also going to increase your max samples quite a bit. But we're going to, we're going to, or I'm going to show you how we're going to optimize it so you can decrease the amount of noise you have in your scene while keeping your rendering times at a minimum. And you can even see right here, we've only been rendering, uh, let's see, for about 42 seconds, 48 seconds. We're only about 5.6% done, um, but the image is almost pretty much rendered out right now. Like this is what we're going to be getting. Everything else is just kind of extra information that we're sending to the GPU that we don't really need. So at 1600 samples and we're only 7% done, our image is almost already rendered. We can decrease it from 1600 to let's say a thousand. Whoops, I keep doing that. A thousand. Now let's render that out and it'll automatically restart again. It's going to actually do something that's really smart. It's going to decrease the samplings to 1,000. It was at 16,000, now it's at 1,000. It's actually going to finish the render where you changed it um, because you're already past that point. We're already past 1,000 samples. So it's saying it's rendered at 169.6%. That's because we dropped it to 1,000 and it was actually at 1,696 samples. So I just eyeballed it. I didn't really say anything particular. I just saw how many samples we had and where I thought it looked the best before we got to that point. So let's go ahead and restart the render. And we're going to see how it looks at 1,000 samples. You can see how fast it's going. It's going pretty quick. It's doing about uh, 5.6 mega samples a second. Now we're at 6.25 just going to keep going up as the other GPUs kick in and it gives you the percentage of how much you've rendered which is really nice and it'll give you an estimate of how long it'll take so at a thousand samples with our current settings it'll take about a minute or less I mean it's gonna change as the other GPUs kick in and whatnot and we're essentially done at that point so even a thousand samples is probably too much but we're gonna keep it like that for now uh, the diffuse depth is how much, how far the uh, the renderer inside of Octane is going to analyze the diffuse information inside of this kernel. And 16 is probably too much still, but we're not going to play with a lot of those. And the same thing with specular depth, if you have a lot more shiny objects, reflective objects, stuff like that, if you want those reflections to really come out, you increase the depth. If you want them to kind of be more softened and uh, they're not going to come out as much. You want to decrease it. The ray epsilon is all based on your scene size. You'll start getting like these black artifacts. They look like bad shadowing inside of your scene. Um, usually you have to increase the ray epsilon, especially if you have a large scene. If you have a small scene, you can get away with smaller sizes. But I'm going to see if I can replicate this. So we're going to decrease it. I mean, I have such a small scene here, it's probably not going to do much, but Let's go ahead and increase it then. And it's also going to mess up your shadows, by the way. 
So if you don't have the right setting for your scene, and you're also going to get like this smudgy look around your object and your textures. So you really have to fine tune this depending on the size of your scene. But for the for most situations, and when I say most, I mean like maybe 90% of every situation, you're going to be keeping it at default, which is 0 .0001. In this case, I can increase it and decrease it just a tad bit more, but like I said, the default was just fine. So 0 .0001, I just did it again. There we go. We don't have to play with it because we have such a small scene here. The filter size is actually going to give your entire scene a a once over essentially and it's going to make your scene that you rendered out softer or sharper and the smaller the filter size the sharper it gets the larger the filter size the more soft it gets as you can see we don't want too much or too little we want exactly what we need so this is just something you're gonna have to experiment with and luckily octane is so fast that you can actually experiment and you don't want and then you won't regret making a change so um, yeah just play around with this see what you need um, and again in most cases 1.2 is the default and that's gonna be fine for most situations we don't have any caustics in our scene, so I'm not going to go over the caustic blur or the GI clamp. Um, well, actually, you know what? We can go over the GI clamp. If you decrease this, you can potentially uh, increase your, or if you decrease this, you can potentially decrease your render times, as in you're, you're speeding up your render. Um, and if you have too little, obviously you're not going to have enough GI information. It's going to go dark. But in a lot of cases, you don't need as much as what de Octane defaults to. You can have just a very little amount, like I just did right there. We're only at 0 .04. And we have enough lighting information coming in where we have good-looking shadows. And I would always recommend decreasing that just a tad bit from its default value so you can um, potentially decrease your render times. And we can set that to 1. And one is typically pretty good even in this situation one is still a little bit too much but it looks good all right so that is all i'm going to talk about currently with the rendering settings but i do recommend if at all possible to at least use direct lighting with ambient occlusion if not the diffuse option but if you can please start diving into the path tracing option we can get into the pmc option but We'll, when we have something that's a little bit more caustic and has a lot more reflections, uh, that's where it, that kernel really comes into play hardcore. So we're not going to really dive into that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down for the time being. And let's go ahead and make another object. It's going to be an octane camera. And I believe we should be able to... It's a little bit slow because we're still rendering. Okay, now it's done. All right. I believe we can place this. Uh, maybe not. Well, in any case, let's go ahead and change the camera to the Octane camera. Oh, okay, I put it where we started. All right, good. Um, I always forget that in other programs, if you make a new camera, it just kind of plops it wherever it goes by default. Luckily, in Cinema 4D and Octane, it usually places it where you were last looking through the other camera, the default camera. So that's good. All right. So now we have this camera. Um, we have the camera tag here, and we're going to go ahead and move this off to the side. And we're going to turn off um, auto focus because we actually want to focus manually with the focus picker. And we want to focus on this object and we want to um, increase or decrease some of the settings here to give us a blur. Now I believe that'll be the f-stop we want to decrease. There we go. Yeah. So now we have this blur fall off. We only want just enough to get the rock into focus and my macro lens is f1.2 so that's what I'm gonna put in there 
just by default and that gives me exactly what I want almost I'm gonna focus there there we go now I can get the outline of the rock here pretty well the focus the foreground right here is um, a little bit shallow and I believe if we change the focal depth here it'd be higher sorry we can change that it's not gonna let me do it very easily though so we're gonna change it to what, 200 centimeters and then we're gonna focus back on the rock Oh, that just changes it so the aperture is probably what needs to be changed but in any case we have the foreground in focus most of the rock in focus and the background blurred which is what I wanted so that looks good um, if I were doing this for like a client I would get the camera setting exactly what I needed but you can see how easy it is to get the aperture you want and the focus you want and it renders out super fast and this isn't just some basic blurring this is real-time blurring so we're not faking anything um, if we were to move that rock further into the back it would focus right here and the rock would be out of focus all that fun stuff alright so that kinda puts things into perspective for a very basic usage inside of Octane um, again we can go into more detail at later times but for the time being this is just the basics and I know I promised this earlier and um, I never got around to doing it but I work nights so I have on my weekends all night do whatever because everybody's asleep in my house during that time so I gotta keep my mind occupied without getting bogged down in playing too many video games uh, but anyways uh, there you go and if you have any questions as always feel free to ask in the comments below thank you